Hello, today we are going to talk about inverse trigonometry. Our objective, objectives today are to use inverse trig functions to find angle measures and use trig to solve real world problems. We are used to sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the regular functions. Now we are going to inverse them. And this means we are looking for the angles. So anytime you are looking for angles, you need to use inverse trig. Okay, so remember when we talked about inverses a little bit in the first chapter, um, in order for a function to be what we call invertible, it has to pass the horizontal line test. Well, if we look at the sine function, we can clearly see that this doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So what we need to do is restrict its domain of theta here so that it does pass the horizontal line test. So we restrict it from negative 90 to positive 90. And that way, our inverse, we would pass the horizontal line test if we're just looking at that little piece. Okay, we do the same idea with cosine, because again, cosine is not invertible, because it looks like this. All right, and again, we restrict it, and we go from 0 to 180. Okay, we don't want any values where they start to repeat, so we can't come back up. And so we look at that restriction right there. Tangent similar. When we look at the graph of tangent, we know it looks like this and looks like this. And again, we want it to pass the horizontal line test. So instead of looking at this graph over here, we completely restrict its domain here to negative 90 to positive 90. And then that little chunk of tangent passes the horizontal line test and therefore has an inverse. This will be really important knowing these so that you give your answers in the correct quadrant because if you give them in the wrong quadrant it's wrong. All right. Uh, this is the notation we should be familiar with a little bit. The inverse, right, because we looked at the idea of f inverse of x. Remember the negative one is not a power, it's just notation. All right, and you may have seen this on your calculator and used this in the calculator in the past. So if you use the second button, they're just right atop sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so let's look at a basic problem. I want to find theta to the nearest degree if I know cosine of theta is 3 fifths. Well, that's easy enough. All I have to do is take inverse cosine of both sides. I'll be left with theta on one side, and I'll be left with inverse cosine of 3 fifths. Go to my calculator, type in inverse cosine of 3 divided by 5, hit enter, and you've got the answer. Now, if some of you typed this into your calculator and did not get 53 degrees, my guess is you are in radians. And you need to make sure you are in degree mode. So go to the mode button, arrow down to where it says radians, arrow over to where it says degree, hit enter, and then go back to your home screen, and you'll be able to get 53 degrees. All right, so what does this mean in our triangle? Well, again, go back to when you first learned what cosine is, right? Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So if I'm to draw myself a triangle here, a right triangle, and call this theta, my adjacent side, which is a side next to theta, will be 3, and the hypotenuse will be 5. And so cosine of theta equals 3 fifths really implies that if I have a 53 degree angle here, um, this side is, the adjacent side is 3 and the hypotenuse is 5 to make this a right angle of 4, of your other side being 4. All right, let's take a problem from a triangle and see if we can come up with the answer here. So our first step is to identify, okay, well, what sides do I have with x? I have the opposite side, and I have the hypotenuse. So if I'm talking opposite and hypotenuse, I know I'm dealing with sine. 
and um, I need to make sure that you're always putting a variable or a letter next to sign or a number. Okay, equals my opposite side, which is 100, over my hypotenuse, which is 200. Take inverse sine of both sides. I can cross off some of those zeros. I have inverse sine of 1 half. And if we go to our calculator, or if we know inverse sine is just of one half is just 30 degrees. All right, I'd like you to take a look at this one. Pause the video if you think you know what you're doing and give it a shot. If you don't, stay with me and I'll tell you how to do it. All right, first thing we do is notice this angle. What is my side length? That's my adjacent side. Hypotenuse, which trig function deals with adjacent and hypotenuse? That would be cosine, so you do cosine of x equals 180 over 200. And then I need to figure out x is just equal to inverse cosine of 180 over 200. I could reduce the fraction, but I don't really need to because I'm going to go to the calculator in anyways. So inverse cosine of 180 divided by 200. I might just count off the zeros just because it's, you know, less typing. All right, and I get 25 degrees. 25, well, they want me to round to the nearest degree, so I'm going to go 26 degrees. All right, let's try one more. Again, pause this video, try this problem, and come back when you're done. Okay, hopefully you are able to tell that this is the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side. And so if you have opposite and adjacent, you're going to be dealing with tangent. So you set up the equation, tan x equals 12 over 15, and then you take the inverse tangent of both sides, go to your calculator, and you should get 39 degrees. All right, now let's go back to some of the other problems we've dealt with a little bit. I have the angle, I have a side length, and I'm looking for another side length. So again, the first thing I do is say, okay, well, that's theta. This is the side adjacent, and this is the side opposite. So that tells me, since I've got adjacent, looking for opposite, I'm dealing with tan. So I do tan of 22 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, and then I need to solve this. Um, most people find it just as easy, just cross-multiplying. Um, that way they always stay the same. So in this case, I just take 6 times tan of 22 degrees, and that equals x. And so I go to my calculator, 6 times tan of 22 equals, and I get 2.42. I think it said to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to leave it that, and I'm going to label it meters. All right, let's try another one. If you know how to do this, please pause, try, try to do it. This is my adjacent side. This is my hypotenuse. So I do cosine of 33 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Now this one's a little bit trickier because uh, my variable's now on the bottom. Again, I found most people like it best if I just cross multiply. Um, and so then I have two steps. X times cosine of 33 equals 14. And then I divide by cosine. After you get a hang of this, though, most of the time you can just realize that if X is on the bottom, I'm going to take my number and divide by my trig. And if um, your variable is on top, you just take your number times your trig. All right, so if I go to my calculator with this one, plug it in, I will get 14 divided by cosine of 33 equals 16.7. So my answer is just x equals 16.7. All right, pause the video, try this one on your own. When you're done, come back and check your answer. Okay, first thing I do, opposite, hypotenuse, so I know I'm dealing with sine. All right, write my equation, 
sine of 62 degrees is equal to 8 over x. And therefore, you cross multiply and you take 8 divided by sine of 62, and I get 9.1 kilometers. Now, a lot of people get tricked up on this one because you got to really pay attention to the angle. We've generally been given our angle down here, but our angle's up here, so now 8 is really the opposite side. So some of you might have thought that was the adjacent side. But please pay attention to where they place the angle you know in the triangle. All right.